after the embarrassing loss to Nebraska for Indiana basketball, it's time to pick yourself back up against the Ohio State Buckeyes. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in. It is the Locked on Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day. We're a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. If you're Indiana basketball, it is time to pick yourself up forget about the Nebraska game, and try to take down the Buckeyes on your home floor. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode as we preview the big matchup here in Bloomington coming up tomorrow on Saturday inside of um, uh, here in, in Bloomington inside of Assembly Hall. So I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day. We are so close to 1,600 subscribers as the time of this recording. We're two away. So I hope by the time you're seeing this, we're already there. But if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, it's free. You don't have to do anything else except just hit the button. Helps me. It helps you keep track of when we go live So and when we post these new videos. So be sure, uh, if you haven't done that, become part of this community. Become a part of this family. It is a lot of fun. Like the video as well. That helps me too. Uh, If you're on your audio platforms, you can subscribe on there. Turn on notifications wherever that you are finding us. And we are free and available wherever you want to find us. And shout out to the everydayers who are here every single day. Uh, It's becoming more. I can tell. It becomes uh, just a growing thing here at Locked on Hoosiers. So thank you so much for, for being a part of this. It is time for Indiana basketball, head coach Mike Woodson, every person, every player, every coach on this team to forget about what happened against Nebraska the other night. We're going to continue to talk about it a little bit in relation to what needs to change for this game and this preview show about the Ohio State game coming up tomorrow night. But if you're Indiana, you've got to forget about that. You cannot come back home against a really, really good Ohio State team and just be coming back with your head down, tail between your legs, and just upset about what happened against Nebraska. So how do you do that if you're Indiana? How do you fix whatever the heck that was? Well, we talked a lot about it in the reaction video of the horrible guard play, the terrible defense on threes, the lack of transition, and really – just being one dimensional on offense. And again, you go back and look at the at the loss 86 to 70 against Nebraska. I mean, nothing was going your way and nothing that you did was good. And the problem is, the biggest problem and head coach Mike Woodson talked about it in his post game press conference. Trey Galloway and Xavier Johnson your two starting guards, and I know Xavier Johnson's coming off the injury. I get that. I get it. But your two guards, they hit four total shots. They had 10 total points, and they combined for seven turnovers. Seven turnovers by your two guards and five total assists. Those are horrible numbers. Okay, those are horrible. Not to mention, were you bad offensively? You got torched defensively by Tominaga, and even some other guards for Nebraska as well just took it to you. They have to be better. They have to be better. And look, here's the thing. I think that the Indiana guards can be better. I've talked about this. The potential for Trey Galloway and Xavier Johnson coming into this season with two leaders at the guard spot Man, that's all you could dream about if you're a head coach in college basketball was to have two senior leader guards that have been here for a while, have played college basketball for a while, coming into this season with big playmakers down low. It's a dream starting five for a head coach. But man, when you don't play like that and you don't play to your potential, it doesn't really matter. And so I think if you are Indiana, it's plain and simple. Get better guard play. 
get better guard play with keeping the basketball and not turning it over, creating better shot opportunities and really just play opportunities. We saw it early with Xavier Johnson the other night against Nebraska. You're going to have to do that against Ohio State. Use your size. They've got some as well, but they play pretty solid defense, and they're coming off a hard-fought win themselves um, that they had the other night. So uh, I think if you're if you're Indiana, your your offensive strategy shouldn't change in regards to Malik Renu, Khalil Ware, McKenzie and Baco. Those guys have to touch the ball, and they pretty much did. I mean, Renu had 14, Khalil Ware had 20, and and uh, and Baco had six, and he was in foul trouble, but. Those guys have to get theirs on top of your guards producing offensively as well. Then on the defensive side, and we're going to get into more keys to the game coming up here throughout the show, but some keys to for this offense and defense for the guards, I'm just honing in on the guards. A big issue is you don't have the depth. You have no trust behind you at the guard spot. I'm sorry, you don't. Gabe Cups is fine. He's fine. He's not going to kill you, but he's not going to beat anybody, right? He's not necessarily going to lose you a game, but he sure as hell is not going to win you a game. And that's a problem. Then with CJ Gunn and Anthony Leal, I mean, it's like deer in headlights sometimes with those kids. And look, I think they're really talented. I saw some people talking about not having the, you know, not having the the system that was right for them and, and whatnot. I just don't think they're playing good basketball right now. You cannot win championships, much less games, if you don't have good guard play. I'm not saying you got to be elite. I'm not saying you have to be championship level, best guards we've ever seen in college basketball, but gum, you got to play up to your potential and at least match what other guards are doing. And defensively, for Trey Galloway in particular, he's a big guard. He has to be able to hold his own when he's playing defense. And I see too many times him going under screens, Gabe Cups going under screens, Xavier Johnson going under screens on shooters and letting them beat you from deep. And then, of course, we saw against Nebraska the the numerous times this his team fouled on three-pointers because you're having to recover and you're having to fly out to the shooter and they're picking that up. They know that Indiana is almost always reeling and recovering on defense. That has to be fixed. And it starts with the guards up top on the perimeter. So my main focal point in this game against Ohio State, we're going to get to some more keys coming up in the next segment, but your guard play has to be better. Your experienced players that you were counting on, if you're Mike Woodson coming into this year, they have to produce. He talked about it, we're talking about it, and it has to happen. Because if they continue to play like they did against Nebraska, not only is Indiana not going to win against Ohio State, not only are they not going to win many games in the Big Ten, they're not going to make the NCAA tournament. If you continue to get guard play like this, if they get up to their potential and play the way they're supposed to, this is a talented, good, dangerous Indiana team. But that has to happen for that narrative to be to be realistic, for it to be existent. And you have to have that in this game against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Well, coming up here on the show, we'll continue to talk about keys to the game as Indiana hosting Ohio State. That's a big, big factor here. The fact that this is in Bloomington here playing at Assembly Hall rather than having to go on the road yet again where you did perform oh so well. We'll talk about that and some more keys coming up in just a second here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. So if you feel confident about the Hoosiers on Saturday, tomorrow, playing Ohio State, maybe... Sign up for FanDuel, throw five bucks on it. If Indiana wins, you'll win 150 bucks just like that. The app is easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. 
like live same game parlays. That's where the that's where the big money is. Find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in their very very nice and user friendly parlay hub. The best way to find popular parlays and much more. So visit fanduelcom on and make your first bet a layup. Fanduel official partner of the NFL. Welcome back into today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day. Reminder, we're free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can subscribe on YouTube. It's free. Like the video is free as well. And on any of your audio platforms, you can subscribe and turn on notifications there as well. Just want to uh, continue to remind you that Locked on has launched our first or the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel here on YouTube. If that's where you're watching on the video site, Locked on Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. It's NBA, NHL, tons of different college shows. You name it, and they got it. If Locked On has it, it's on Locked On Sports today, and it runs 24 hours, seven days a week. I can't tell you how many times I'm up at, you know, way too late in the night watching Locked On Sports today. Go subscribe to them on YouTube. They would greatly appreciate it, and check it out when you have the chance. They're doing something really, really cool over there. But as we get into keys to the game, we do this every time, keys to the game for Indiana, taking on Ohio State at home on a Saturday night. Those factors right there are really, really key. You are at home. Thank God, right? You're at home. You're coming off a bad road performance, uh, an historic loss. I read somewhere, that's the first time Indiana has lost to Nebraska by, I believe, 16 points or more. Ever. How about that? Huh? How about that? Um, ever that Indiana has lost to Nebraska by that much. So not your best outing. I would say that's fair, right? Not your best outing, but you're coming back home to an atmosphere that in some of these games this year, including the Kansas game, it's been one of the best atmospheres all season, and it is every year, but you get what I'm saying. You're coming home to almost win your fans back. And I know that's kind of crazy, but just given the feedback that I get from you here on the show uh, that I see on X and Twitter and on social media and on the boards, like this fan base is really teeter-tottering right now on where they stand on Indiana basketball, where they stand on some of the older guys on this team, especially where they stand on head coach Mike Woodson. Like there's a lot of discomfort in the Indiana fan base right now. And coming up on the show in the final segment, we're going to actually take comments and thoughts from you. Uh, we're taking YouTube comments on our reaction video from the Nebraska game. So uh, if you, in the future, comment on those videos, because I'm going to start doing segments like that to have more engagement uh, from you, the fans and the listeners. But there's just a lot of frustrations, and rightfully so, with this Indiana fan base. This is an opportunity at home Saturday night, packed house against a big name team who's really, really good in the Ohio State Buckeyes. You have a chance to win them back. You have a chance to prove, hey, we are a good team. That Nebraska game, that's not who we are. The Auburn game, that's not who we are. We are the team that almost took down Kansas on this floor, right? That place is special. Assembly Hall is a special place to play. Crazy things have happened in there. We know that. We've seen them. We've grown up watching that. Beautiful things have happened in that building. You've got to make that the case on Saturday because Ohio State is a really, really good team. Feed off your crowd. Feed off being home. Make this an opportunity to pick yourself up off the floor. Pick yourself up off the mat and bounce back with a really big win. It's going to be tough, though. And the Indiana guards, I was talking about them in that previous segment, offensively, they're going to have to score and to help carry the load. Defensively, they're going to be challenged, and here's why. Ohio State's two leading scorers, in case you didn't know, are guards. Bruce Thornton, who averages 32 minutes a game, not points, 32 minutes a game, but he does average over 17 points a game. And then Roddy Gale Jr., he plays 30 minutes a game, and he averages 15 points a game. Those two gentlemen, uh, Thornton is averaging 45% from the floor, 83% from the line, and 37% from downtown. Gail Jr. is averaging, again, 15 points on the year. 
He shoots 50, 50% from the floor as a guard. It's insane. He shoots 77% from the free throw line and 39% from beyond the arc. So two guards are their leading scorers who can shoot the basketball really well. That's a horrible formula for this Indiana squad. You got to stay disciplined. You got to stay on their hip, stay disciplined, defend without fouling because these guys can obviously shoot some free throws. And that's, I'm going to be honest, it's really scary to me that their two leading scorers are guards. And I watched them play. I've seen them a few times here and there, but I watched most of their game uh, the other night before uh, the Indiana game came on. They are a, they're a gritty bunch, man. They didn't give up in that game. They were, they were there the whole time. They ended up winning it there at the end, even with a couple of pushes from, from their opponent. And that's, that's strong, man. This is not going to be an easy team to put away. This will be a dog fight for 40 minutes. And the Hoosiers defensively cannot lose Bruce Thornton and Ronnie Gale Jr. And then you have some of their big guys, right? Jamison Battle, Zed Key, and then Felix Akpara, who's six foot 11. He will be uh, matched up with Khalil Ware or Malik Renu, kind of depending on who's in the basketball game. They've got some, Scott, the, some size. And here's the other thing. Ohio State is deep. Indiana's not. Indiana could, could, can be, I guess. They're not right now. Ohio State is deep. They have nine guys that average double-digit minutes. Nine. That means they have nine guys that play significant roles on this basketball team. Scoring-wise, it's not crazy. Uh, only three guys in double digits. But out of those nine guys that average double-digit minutes, anywhere from 17 points down to two. Now, the drop-off after that's pretty significant. But, hell, nine teams or nine players is a lot better than what Indiana has and can trust to play in a basketball game. So, if you're Indiana... You're hoping to get Ohio State into some foul trouble. Get into that bench a little bit. Stick to the guards. Don't let them beat you because your size is your advantage, offensively and defensively. I think you have to get it out of their hands, force it down low. And we've seen Khalil Ware and Malik Renu hold their own. They do a wonderful job down low of when the ball is entered there, they just stay. They don't jump. They don't reach. They don't foul a ton down there. They just hold their own because Khalil Ware's seven foot, man. It's hard to shoot a basketball over him or around him. They do a really good job of that. So that's what I want to see is – Let's try to get Ohio State into some foul trouble, get into that bench, and let's just make this a run and gun type of game. I trust our five at their best over their five at their best. I'm just being honest with you. But we have to get our best from our best players in this game. Because if you don't, Ohio State's going to run you out of your own gym. I like this game. I like Indiana in this game. But you have to respond. And the reason I like Indiana in this game is because the last time we saw a game like we did against Nebraska, it was the Auburn game in Atlanta. What happened? Big game back home on a Saturday. Indiana almost did it and had the upset of the year to take down Kansas. And they should have won that game. We all know that. So I'm taking us. I'm taking the Hoosiers. I think we win this game, but it's going to be close. It it may be a freaking buzzer beater, literally. Like, it, it's going to be that close, I think. But man, if you can win this, how it just washes away that Nebraska win, who's a very good team, a very good team. But I'm taking the Hoosiers over Ohio State Saturday night in Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana. Give me the Hoosiers. Coming up here on the final segment of Locked on Hoosiers, a fun thing that I want to start doing. I've done it once. I think we enjoyed it. I hope you did. I really did. I hope you did as well. And I want to continue to do this. We're going to read through comments and thoughts from you, and I'll kind of react to some from our previous video and uh, episode on YouTube, right? We posted audio and video, but taking comments from the YouTube video from the uh, Indiana and Nebraska reaction video, and there's a lot of good things in there. We're going to talk to those, react to those coming up here in just a second on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Look, we've all been there when you try to buy tickets to the sporting event, the concert, theater, if you're into that type of thing. Um, we've all been there where you're buying a ticket and you just don't trust it. You just don't feel right 
about it. Well, you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Some of my favorite parts of Game Time, the easy-to-find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area, and the views from your seats in every single venue, you just can't beat it. You can literally see what your view will be if you buy that ticket before you buy it. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what you expect when you arrive. Plus, you can buy tickets in seconds with literally just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N for 20% off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Back here on the. The this episode of Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day. We're free and available as part of the Locked on Podcast Network wherever you get your podcast. A fun segment coming up, I think. And we did this once, and I want to start doing this more of a trend here on the show. Going to read through thoughts and comments from our last YouTube video. So if you're on YouTube and you're watching these videos, comment below. I try to go through and like. Uh, Sometimes I try to comment on them and try to get some engagement with you, the listeners, and and make this a a bigger community than it already is. But on on the reaction video for Indiana and Nebraska, lots of good comments on there. And I wanted to get your thoughts because and kind of react to those because it all intertwines with what we've just talked about. So Looking through some of these, okay, these are the comments on the uh, the last episode on YouTube. So just kind of looking through, we'll start at the bottom and kind of work our way up through some of these. Not going to read them all. Don't have time for that, but um, just kind of just kind of reading through these. Uh, Roba9309 says, Xavier Johnson coming back hurt the team. He said he's a detriment. We still look poorly coached. I'll say this about Xavier Johnson. He did not help you the other night against Nebraska. I mean, he definitely didn't. I think he helps you long-term because you don't have anything behind him. That's the problem. Gabe Cups is fine, right? That's the word that I've come up with is fine, but he doesn't have any real high potential right now. Not saying he doesn't in the future, but Gabe Cups isn't going to score for you and win you any basketball games. And so did Xavier Johnson hurt you against, against Nebraska? Probably but you got to get him in at some point. They felt confident to bring him back then, and it just didn't work out. Lots of comments. I'm not going to pick one in particular, but I mentioned this earlier. There's a lot of frustration with head coach Mike Woodson. There is. There's a lot of frustration here because of the same trends that continue to to hurt this team, and people are getting frustrated. They've got to see something to get them back on. They've got to see some change here. This is a huge coaching opportunity, not just against Ohio State, but in the next two weeks, three weeks for Indiana and head coach Mike Woodson, a big opportunity uh, from from, uh, from either winning this fan base back or really, really losing them. Uh, Let's see. I got a comment that says, we need to stop subbing so much. They can't get in a rhythm um, and, and asking, why didn't Peyton Sparks play more? You know, there's been a lot of conversation about the substitution strategy, and I put that in air quotes, right? There's been a lot of questioning of that with head coach Mike Woodson, and I'm kind of with you. Like, it, my biggest problem is the inconsistency. Like, sometimes you have your starters in, and they've left them in pretty much the whole game like Kansas because they knew that's all they had, that's all they could do. But then you have the Auburn game where you started them, you were had a big lead. You pulled him. Auburn came back, and the game was over after that. Then in this game, you have some guys come out, other guys come in, but that's never really consistent game to game. So yeah, I, I'm with you on that. The fact that a let's not sub as much. I mean, you, these guys got to get some rest for sure. But if you're in a rhythm on a little bit of a run, leave them in. Leave them in. You've got a media timeout coming up at some point. They're after every four minutes, so. They can't be that tired, but you've got to keep your best players on the floor as long as possible. Uh, Peyton Sparks not playing anymore. Um, I I don't know. I mean, 
not not 100% sure on that. I mean, I've liked him when he's in at times. It hasn't been just the most overly impressive thing, but uh, I don't know. There may be something something else there. Um, this guy, uh, let's see, uh, Michael says, uh, roster construction is terrible, as is the team's defense and offensive ball movement. Um, and let's see, there's a response that says, it's a really different game, a pro model, and everyone's trying to get there. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just the the structure is just not there right now. And the flow is not there for this team. And it just seems, seems like they're always playing catch up on defense and they're always stalled out on offense. If they don't get it to Khalil where Malik renew immediately. And again, I think that comes with guard play, better guard play threats other than those two players. McKenzie and Baca was becoming that uh, the Nebraska game didn't help him out a whole bunch. So I hope to see him bounce back well against Ohio state, but yeah, it's just, I'm with you. The the construction and the the usage of this roster is just not being used um what what how it should be uh right now. Uh we also have uh we have Kevin, Kevin who says, How can a guard get to this level and not be able to shoot? He said, I'm a lifelong Hoosier fan, but this program has been hard to watch the last 10 plus years. Couple of replies to that saying that Cups and Leo can shoot. Uh, says they need a system to get them open shots. That's what I referenced earlier. X, Gallo, and Gunn all have shooting form issues. And, and that that comment of needing a system, right? I get that. I do. I get that. But take Trey Galloway, for example. There are times where he has that open shot and he just immediately passes it up. He gets the ball and he's he's already looking to pass before the ball even gets to him, right? He's over here, he's looking, he gets it and swings it immediately or dumps it down low. But then there's other times where he's not open and he takes the shot anyway. I don't really understand that. Xavier Johnson, it's going to take a while for him to get back into uh, into his rhythm coming off the injury. But I like him with the ball on the floor going to the basket more than I do pulling up deep from three. Uh, that's just me personally. But yeah, there seems to be a shooting issue here. And I don't see how that's a, a problem when you get to college basketball, Big Ten, Power Six basketball, but we seem to have it right now here, here in in Indiana. Uh Jacob Dye says, Don't feel bad. Nebraska is just good this year. He's not wrong. Nebraska's a good team. And if you look at what they have coming up, I saw this was another comment, so I'll wrap up with this. They have Wisconsin on the road this Saturday, right, this weekend. They have number one Purdue coming to their house there in Nebraska. All right, well, maybe Tominaga will go off and take down Purdue. That'd be cool. And then they, if they can get through those games, man, they have Iowa, Rutgers, Northwestern, Ohio State, Maryland. Like, they've got some winnable games on that schedule. If Nebraska can, can win either against Wisconsin on the road or Purdue at home somehow, would that take us a little bit of the sting away from this? Possibly. And somebody said that in the comments as well. Uh, yeah, there's a uh, looks like a Nebraska fan, Husker Chuck, uh, 9212, said Indiana uh, has loads of talent. Nebraska is much better than people think this year. They can defend. Uh, they have already beaten Michigan State, which is true. And he said when Tommy Naga gets hot, he is ridiculous. And we saw that firsthand the other night for Indiana. So that's some of the things that you are saying in the YouTube comments. Go to YouTube, comment down below on anything you want to talk about. I want to keep doing this segment at least once a week, if not more. I think this could be a lot of fun. If you're on audio, you can tweet at us, at Locked on Hoosiers, on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. You can follow me on there as well. If you are on YouTube or if you end up going to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. It's free. It's easy for you to do. It's literally one tap. Just hit the subscribe button. It's free. You don't have to do anything else. We're pushing to 1,600, and then we're going towards 2,000. So help us be a part of that. Come be a part of this community. It is a lot of fun. It's growing, and it is really special. Turn on notifications wherever you get your podcast, and uh, we'll have a reaction video go up after the Ohio State game. It'll be late Saturday night. But we'll have one go up for you. We'll have one go up for you late Saturday. You can find it then, Sunday, whenever you'd like. And then we'll be back on Monday. So have a great weekend. Go Hoosiers. I have us winning against Ohio State, man. I hope we do. We need a big win here. Until next time, Hoosier fans, stay safe. And I'll talk to you later.